New overnight, President Joe Biden is in Ukraine right now for a surprise unannounced visit. Friday marks one year since Russia invaded Ukraine. So today, President Biden is in the capital, Kyiv, to show his support. He got there around three this morning our time and met with Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky. The president said, quote, one year later, Kyiv stands and Ukraine stands, democracy stands, end quote. He also announced the U.S. is sending another half billion dollars in aid to Ukraine. The cost that Ukraine has had to bear has been extraordinarily high, and the sacrifices have been far too great. They've been met, but they've been far too great. We mourn alongside the families of those who've been lost to the brutal and unjust war. We know that there'll be very difficult days and weeks and years ahead. This is a historic visit. This is the first time in modern history that a U.S. president has entered a war zone where there is not an active American military presence. This morning, police in Denver are investigating two hit and run crashes that left the victims seriously hurt and in the hospital. It's been more than a week since someone hit Sam Fairbank while he was on his bike. It happened on Park Avenue and Glen Arm just two blocks from his home last Saturday night. Police say the driver stopped, got out of the car, saw what happened and still drove away. Sam's stepson says his family is just hoping that someone knows something. I know that the driver was scared. Obviously, they were scared. They ran. But my dad was scared, and he was left on the pavement to die, you know? I just, I constantly think about how terrified he was. He says Sam is still in the ICU with broken ribs, back, and head trauma, and he isn't improving much. So far, police have only released a blurry photo. They say the car is a red or orange Chevy Trax, and it might have some damage on the front. Police say they think the driver was a woman with a man in the passenger seat. They've talked to several witnesses, but are still asking anyone who saw anything to give them a call. Another woman is in the hospital after someone hit her car and drove off. Denver police say this happened around 3.30 Saturday morning on I-25 southbound just north of Hampton. Dawson Armstrong says he was driving his friend Bridget when a speeding car hit them and then drove off. Because of it, they got stuck in the middle of I-25. Then police say a semi-truck hit them. The semi-driver did stay on scene. Bridget went to the hospital. We talked to Dawson Armstrong. He says Bridget's skull is fractured, but she's hanging in there. Police didn't have a description for the car that drove off, but the family describes it as a mid-sized dark red hatchback SUV. Right now, police in Fort Collins are looking into the death of a man who was hit by a car while running from deputies. It happened on I-25 North at East Mulberry around Saturday, uh, around 9 on Saturday night. That's the Mountain Vista exit there. Deputies say they stopped a car with an expired registration. They say the man used a fake name and they asked him to get out of the car. When he got out, the man ran from the deputies toward the highway. Deputies say they used a taser, but a passing car hit that man. He sadly died at the hospital. The critical incident response team is also looking into this. Colorado's lawmakers are considering a bill that would allow cities and counties to limit landlords' power. Right now, there is a ban on rent stabilization, so landlords can raise a tenant's rate rent to whatever amount they'd like. And that makes it hard on a lot of people who are already struggling to pay their rent every month. Rent.com shows the average one bedroom in Denver is nearly $2,100 a month right now. Renters say this bill would make a huge difference. Well, it would give me the ability to plan for my future. You know, I never know from year to year how much I'll be able to save. That means that they're able to set roots and be connected to their community. It means that parents don't have to go to bed worried uh, whether they're going to be able to make rent and have a roof over their heads. Now, the Apartment Association opposes the bill, saying rent control doesn't work and actually leads to less housing and higher prices. The association added that Colorado should instead focus on creating more housing units. Next week, you'll be able to buy wine along with your groceries. That change is coming March 1st statewide. 90s reporter Brianna Fernandez is live in Denver at Joy Wine and Spirits. And Brianna, local liquor stores say they're not ready for this change. Yeah, not at all. They say that this will take a huge chunk of their business, and that's because wine sales take about 20 to 30 percent of their revenue and competing with grocery stores. That's definitely going to hurt them. So we know local liquor stores, they are preparing for this new law, and it passed back in November by less than 2 percent. We spoke to Carolyn Joy, owner of Joy Wine and Liquor, who says she won't see the true impact of this new law 
that it has on her business for a few months. Now she's worried shoppers will bypass her store and make a one stop shop for wine at grocery stores like King Super, Safeway or even Trader Joe's. Instead, local liquor stores are asking you to support them with your business, even if it's not the most convenient. Even if it means going next door or making a separate trip, um, it's just really important because, you know, businesses like mine depend on all of their sales. Yeah, so we know local liquor stores will have to rethink their business model once this law takes into effect next week, Wednesday. That's March 1st. Corey, Jordan. I know there is a convenience factor in all of this, but I also hope that a lot of people continue to support their local mom and pop shops because this is going to be detrimental to so many of them. Yeah, I mean, it's heartbreaking even hearing Caroline Joy mm -hmm. uh, just talk about all the sales that she's gotten from wine and having to, you know, compete with these big chains. That's just going to be uh, heartbreaking for her business. So hopefully they can stay afloat and keep their doors open. Well, look, I will tell you the selection will continue to be better at these local yeah. mom and pop shops. So a lot of people will be going for those. And also Coloradans like to shop local. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they will continue to support uh, those local mom and pop shops that they already love. Brianna, we appreciate your reporting. Thank you. Well, a group of Democratic state lawmakers wants to give restaurant and retail workers better control of their work schedules. The Fair Work Week bill would require companies with 250 workers or more to provide schedules 14 days in advance, 12 hours of rest between shifts and additional pay for late schedule changes, among some other things. Director of Operations at Ted's Montana Grill, Kirstie Ranser, says this bill would actually take away schedule flexibility for workers. And we would also have to have more team members because if our team members are no longer t able to work double shifts, we would have to, in a very difficult labor market as is, try to employ more people. According to the Colorado Restaurant Association, if this bill is passed, it would cost restaurants an average of $70,000 per year per location. Well, there are some businesses where you walk in the door and you know you're walking into a community. Ryan Frazier shows us one of those places in this week's business brief. Going to the hair salon can be about more than just a haircut. For some, it's an experience with a deeper and personal relationship with your hairstylist or barber. Nationally, it's estimated to be a $48 billion industry. And here in Colorado, it employs thousands of people. And as people continue to move to our state, one salon in particular has seen growth and success from a combination of new clientele and maintaining their loyal customers. Precious is the owner of the Hair Fetish Experience. She says her salon puts an emphasis on the relationships they build with their clients. You definitely become, shall I say, closer building with the, your community, building with them. You never know what someone's going through. So for us, for a client to come and sit in my chair is much more of a a special time for us to share one another's thoughts and or growth. And of course, I have to make sure I keep their hair nice and healthy. The hair fetish experience puts people first, along with keeping up to date on the latest trends and styles. They also are a diverse salon with the capability to work with all types of hair textures. Precious is a third generation's licensed cosmetologist. Her entire family is in the business of hair. She told me her family inspires her along with the team of stylists and barbers who make the salon a community for their customers. That's your business brief for Nine News. I'm Ryan Frazier.